Hello, I am Professor Sunil Mathur. I am head of the department, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Maharaja Garcia Institute of Technology. I am going to take the course Microprocessor ATT5 and ATT6. The books they are Microprocessor ATT5 and its interfacing by me only, that is Professor Sunil Bhatro. Microprocessor 8086, Architecture, Programming and Interfacing by me only again. Microprocessor and Microcontrollers by myself and Professor J. Panda. Publisher of all these books, they are PHI. Now to start with, what is Microprocessor? What do you mean by Microprocessor? Microprocessor, it is you can say a single chip CPU that is termed as microprocessor. Single chip CPU, you might have, you all have studied what a micro, uh, what a microprocessor, uh, what a computer is. Computer, the basic program of which is, as you know, that it consists of basically three parts that is your uh, memory then there is ALU then there is CU and that is connected with the external world through the input and the output devices such block diagram you have studied throughout your schooling days and up to now this as you know is known as CPU which consists of the memory, ALU and the control unit. Memory where we store the program, ALU where we perform the arithmetic and logical unit, uh, operation on the stored data and all those things that is controlled by the control unit. Now if this whole CPU which might consist of so many chips, programmable, uh, programmable chips or other type of the, uh, the memory that may be made up of many chips, ALU that may be made up of many chips, control that may be again a single chip or many chips. All these things they are available in the CPU. Now if the CPU, the whole CPU that is fabricated on a single chip, that means a single IC. A single IC which consists of all these the CPU parts that is you can say the ALU the CU and RU this is ALU which is exactly same of this this is CU which is again exactly same of this here it is memory and it is register unit though as you know memory that is made up of registers only so here instead of creating thousands and thousands and registers we create a few number of registers that is why it, instead of calling it a memory unit we simply call it a register unit so, if all this CPU is fabricated on this single chip, then this chip is known as MPU, that is microprocessor unit. So, single chip CPU is your MPU, microprocessor unit. Now, as a chip standalone cannot work we have to in interface the various to connect it to the external world we have to interface with it with the input unit as it is as well as the output unit as it is apart from this as you know that the microprocessor, the computer, it works on stored programs. 
so we have to write a program and then that program is to be stored in some memory on the basis of which only this will work hence there is one more part of it and that part is external memory so you can say the memory which is inside the cpu now it is external to the mpu and see whole of the things that is stored here and that is executed here now this whole system it is known as the whole system now it is termed as micro computer or your personal computer so now you can say a micro computer is a computer which is developed around a microprocessor the mpu unit right now the architecture of a mpu that is a microprocessor what is inside a microprocessor how we develop the microprocessor as you know whenever we have to develop anything we have to create anything then in that case first the very first thing is we have to define what operation what works this particular thing which we are going to create will function as what will be the operation of it why we are developing it and hence here also the very first thing is we define what the microprocessor will do that is the microprocessor operations like as you know now we are having the microprocessor the mpu and this mpu is externally connected with the memory where our programs stored programs data that that is to be stored and there is input output unit now the input and output unit they are combinedly termed as io we call it we use a terminology that is io so this our memory is there io is there and this microprocessor is there so these are the basically three parts of a microcomputer so now we will define the work of this microprocessor and here we classify we define three operation that the first one is that is the microprocessor initiated operation microprocessor operations uh, in fact microprocessor internal operations microprocessor initiated operation did operations then second one is microprocessor internal operation and the third one is externally or peripheral initiated operations that means the first operation that the microprocessor the operation which will be initiated by the microprocessor and the external world external world here means the memory and the io they will do it so you can say the first operation is the microprocessor initiated operation that my operation which will be initiated by the microprocessor and the peripheral will do the operation second one is the operation which are carried out inside the microprocessor and the third one is the external world will say ask the microprocessor to do something that is microprocessor externally or peripheral initiated operations so we classify these three operations now we will see 
to do these three operations what we require what we have to infect into the system and from here we will start with developing the microprocessor the first operation that is the microprocessor initiated operation now as you know what operation can be initiated by the microprocessor which can be performed by the peripheral devices that is the memory and the IOs as we know memory that can store the data or that can retrieve the data input that can input the data provide the data to the microprocessor output where microprocessor will send the data to the so we can say the memory as well as the IO they can do only the read operation and the write operation so microprocessor will initiate a read or a write operation and two with reference to memory or the IOS and the my, my memory and the my IOS they will do that work so to perform this microprocessor initiated operation what we require we require that the microprocessor and the memory and the IOS they must have some link they must have some connections so microprocessor initiated operation will be carried out by sending the information to the memory as well as to the IOS and the vice versa for read microprocessor the memory or the IO they will send the information to the microprocessor for write they will send microprocessor will send the information to this and this link between these two that is microprocessor and the peripheral device these are connected through the wires termed as lines or the buses more that bus is a more technical or preferred word which we going to use which we are which we use throughout the session so to perform the microprocessor initiated operation we requires a bus system and as we know there are various type of informations suppose if we want to read a data from the memory what we require first of all we have to find out where in the memory the data is because there, there are so many registers lakhs and thousands of registers available in the memory the data will be available in a particular register only and we to get the data from that register we must have an address of that register then and then only we can fetch the data from there to fetch the data from there that means we must have to send the address of that register then with reference to register we can read the from that as well as we are having an option to write into it so we must have another type of information that is the control information by which we can perform the read operation or the write operation from that particular addressed register inside the memory then and then only the data from that register that will be sent to the microprocessor and again sent to another type of lines hence you can say the bus system it consists of different type of information carrying buses or lines and they are termed as first the address lines or the address bus second the data bus and the third that is the control bus address bus which will carry the address and this address will be of registers or address of an input device or address of an output device 
so we microprocessor will send the address information as this information is only to be carried out from microprocessor to the memory or to the io these buses they are unidirectional buses that means these lines they propagate only from microprocessor to the peripherals so unidirectional secondly these buses they are always be as group of lines the address lines they behave as a group of lines that means individual lines will not work if they are for example 885 it is having 16 address lines that means all those 16 li address lines they will act together right and these 16 lines they are unidirectional propagating from microprocessor 885 to the peripherals second data bus as data can be sent to the memory or to the output port or from memory or from the input port to the microprocessor hence these lines they are bidirectional so you can say address lines they are unidirectional data lines they are bidirectional these lines they are also group of lines so hence you can say data bus they always act together whatever number of lines are there whatever number of data bus is there they act together in 885 there are eight data lines hence the data from those on those data line they will be carried together either from peripheral or to the microprocessor or microprocessor to the peripheral third control lines or the control bus control bus they are individual lines right they are not group of lines they are individual lines and this carries the control information the control signals that is read operation signal or the write operation signal these read and write operation signals as you know they are generated by the microprocessor hence these are again unidirectional generated by the microprocessor and goes to the peripheral and these are the individual lines here i am representing double line with an arrow double line with double arrow and these are individual lines so here they are unidirectional act together bidirectional act together and independent lines so you can say to perform the microprocessor initiated operation they are the we require the bus system address bus data bus and control bus different microprocessors they can have different bus system that means for example 85 it is having 16 address lines 85 it is having 16 address lines data it is 8 data lines whereas in 8086 there are 20 address lines and 16 data lines but all microprocessors they are having it without this microprocessor cannot perform the operation microprocessor initiated operation which can be further categorized as memory read operation memory write operation io read operation io write operation so microprocessor initiated operation microprocessor initiated operation they are memory read memory write io read and io write and to perform these operation we request the microprocessor requires the bus system and different microprocessors they have different address and the data lines Now the second operation that is microprocessor internal operation this 
microprocessor internal operation can be further categorized in different operations. What operation microprocessor has to do internally? The operation which are performed by the microprocessor internally. Under this category, in the first operation is to store the data inside the microprocessor. To store a data. And in fact, data or internal intermediate results. Temporarily. This data is to be stored temporarily. Temporarily. In, if we are going to talking about 885, then the 8-bit data can be stored internally for the temporary that data may be the data or the intermediate results that is to be stored it is to be stored somewhere second operation is to perform for arithmetic matic or logical operation On that data. The data which is stored internally on that data we have to perform either the arithmetic operation or the logical operation. Third operation which comes under microprocessor internal operation is to check a condition. That means to perform during this arithmetic or logical operation if a condition is required or a condition is generated to check the, that condition. So the third one is to check a condition if any. It is not necessary always if any. Fourth one is to sequence the program. As we know, we have to execute something, we have to write a program which is to be written inside the microprocessor memory and microprocessor will take or fetch the instruction one by one from the memory and execute sequentially. So next job is to, to sequence the program. The program. That means in which order the program is to be executed. You will say the program is always executed in that order that in which it is written. But it is so so is not the case. If there at a certain time there is a if then statement, then the order is to be break. Microprocessor has to perform some branching operation. So it is not necessary that the program is executed in the same sequence in, in which it is written. Fifth one is to store a data in a predefined read-write memory known as come later on onto this stack. So these are the five different operations which we can enumerate which comes under the category microprocessor internal operations. So to get these five operations done which, what we required? What a microprocessor will require? To start with the first operation that is to store a data or an intermediate result temporarily.
to do this microprocessor requires the register unit the register units which consist of independent registers all the microprocessors whether 85 86 386 486 pentium etc all they are having the register units few number of registers and they depend processor to processor if we talk about 885 here 885 it consists of six general purpose data registers and one accumulator six general purpose data registers general purpose that means the registers which can be utilized which can be used by the programmer for general purpose data operation so here in 885 there are six general purpose data operator registers they are register b register c register d register e register h register l all these six general purpose data registers they are of 8 bit apart from this there is another register which is known as accumulator this accumulator is also a general purpose data register but you can say with some special functioning that means which the other register cannot perform those special operation which accumulator can perform they are that it participate in all the arithmetic and logical operation that means in 885 if we have to add two numbers for example then out of those two numbers we must have to store one number in accumulator for example if we have there are two numbers which are available one is available in b register another is available in c register you can say one is stored in b register another is stored in c register and we have to add these two registers we cannot do it we cannot add b with c what we have to do is either the data from b or the data from the c that is to be transferred to accumulator and then accumulator will be added to the another register that means suppose the B register content is transferred to A and then we can add A with C. So either we can say A with plus C or we can say A plus B. That means accumulator will always participate. Two operation may say out of the two operation, A uh, data wo accumulator may hoga hi hoga. Do there are certain exceptions are there which we will discuss later on after the operation the arithmetic operation or the logical operation the result will be available in accumulator we need not to say where the result will go it will automatically go to the accumulator that means you can say if you are adding a with b then the result will always be in a And the third operation which accumulator can do, mind there is one more thing. Due to these two features that it will participate in all the arithmetic and logical operation and the result will be available in accumulator. Due to these two features, this accumulator is termed as a part of ALU, not a part of this register unit. So due to these two capabilities of it these two functions of it accumulator is termed as a part considered as a part of ALU not a part of register unit the third operation which the accumulator can perform which none other register can perform that is it is the only register which will communicate it is the only register which will communicate with the IOs that means a data from the input device 
from the input port will come to accumulator only to not any of the other register B, C, D, E, H, L. And also, if we have to send a data to the output port, then the data of accumulator can only go to the output port. Suppose if we want to transfer the data of D register to the output port, we cannot transfer it. First, we have to transfer the data of D to accumulator and then accumulator will transfer the data to the IO port. Is it right? So, accumulate, there are three functions. Always participate in all the arithmetical logical operation. After the operation, result is always available in accumulator. And it is the only register which will communicate to the peripheral or the IO, not peripheral, to the IO devices. The input and the output device. Right? Now, come back to the general purpose data registers. The B, C, D, E, H, L. They are the 8-bit registers. Whenever 8-bit data is there, that is to be stored here. And then later on operated in the, whatever operation is to be performed, then it is operated accordingly. No doubt, 8085 is an 8-bit microprocessor that means it can operate 8-bit data and that is why we are having 8-bit registers here but apart from being an 8-bit processor it can perform certain 16-bit operations also so microprocessor 885 though it is an 8-bit processor it can perform 8-bit operation it performs all 8-bit operations but apart from that it can perform certain 16-bit operations also, right? And if it can perform 16-bit operation, quite obvious, it is required that that 16-bit operation which is to be performed, that is to be performed on certain data. So there must be a capability of storing 16-bit data also. But we are having only 8-bit registers. So what happens? Whenever microprocessor has to perform 16-bit operation, it has to store the 16-bit data and to store the 16-bit data, these resistors, they form pairing. That means B will pair with C, the 16-bit data will store in B-C register pair. D will pair with E, it can be stored in D-E register pair it can be stored in HL register pair. This pairing is fixed. That means B will only pair with C. It cannot pair with E, D, L or H. Same, H can pair with, not perform uh, pairing with E, C or any other. It can only pair with L register. So this pairing is fixed. And as it is fixed, throughout our 885 literature, whenever there is a register pair, we only mention the higher order register pair. Higher order means that means if a data, if a data 2050 is H, here H means it is hexadecimal data. If this data is to be stored, then this data will be stored. Suppose I say it is to be stored in H register pair. So H register that will store 20 and L register that will store 50. If BC then DE then so the D, D and H they store the higher order data that means the MSB byte and C, E and L they will store the lower order data the LSB byte and whenever we refer a register pair we refer only the higher order register pair register the other register is always in blind that means for example there is an instruction I can say I N X H We will discuss it in detail in later on. Here you can say this instruction is to increment the content of register pair HL. The instruction
instruction is made to increase the content of the register pair HR. Here we do not mention HR. We simply mention H, the higher order register. N is always implied. So what I mean to say is the C register, the E register and the L register, they are always implied. They are not mentioned in the instructions. Okay, so to perform the second operation, first operation under the internal data operation, microprocessor ATP5 that is having a register unit. And that register unit consists of these registers, 8-bit registers. And there is another register accumulator, though it is not part of it, it is part of that AIP unit. Now next thing is, the second operation of it, that is, internal operation the second one is to perform arithmetic and logical operation on the data which is stored in the register unit and to do that as we know the block diagram of the microprocessor the ALU is there so ALU is used to perform that second operation of the internal data operation category so you can say to perform the Arithmetic and logical operation, we have the ALU unit inside the microprocessor. The third one is to test a condition if any. To test a condition if any. That means, what that means to test or set a condition. What that means is, suppose microprocessor, we add two numbers and a carry generate. How that carry is to be reflected? That means how the result of addition two numbers or uh, uh, performing end operation of the two numbers, how that result is. Though absolute result we know, but there we require certain other information on the basis of which we can do some more work. What? That we will discuss slightly later on. To do the testing that we are having another type of register here which is known as flag register so you can say that to perform the third operation that is to test a condition first we have for this we have another type of register which is known as flag register This is an 8-bit register. In case of 885, 886, it is having 16-bit register. So different processor, they have different size of the flag register. Flag register, this register consists of individual flag bits. Those flag bits, they represent the status of the result. Status of the result means how the result is, whether the result is positive or the result is negative, whether the result during that operation there generates a carry or we requires a borrow for subtraction or whether the result is zero or the result is non-zero. What is the parity of whether it is of even parity? or what is of old parity, overflow is there, not there. So such type of information, status information of the result that is reflected by the flag register. Different processors have different flag bits. Here in 885, we are having five different type of flag bits which represent five different conditions. They are the carry flag bit, the auxiliary carry flag bit, the parity flag bit, the sign flag bit, and the zero flag bit. 
8085 it is having these five flag bits they represent these five different conditions status conditions of the current result which most of the time is available in accumulators right sometimes some says it reflects the status of the accumulator no it rep represent it reflects the status of the current arithmetic or logical operation these flag bits they are individual flag bits they are nothing they are well, in fact they are represented by individual flip flops e there will be a flip flop here there will be a flip flop for this 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 the set or reset state of their individual flip flops they will reflect whether that particular condition exist or not and these five flag bit flip flops whose setting or resetting represent their respective status condition these five flag uh, flip flops they are housed in an 8 bit register five individual bits of these register they represent these and the rest three they are don't cares now what is these the jet zero start with zero the zero flag bit it represent whether the result is zero or non zero if this bit is zero that means reset it means the current result it is non zero it may be positive it may be negative but it is not zero and if it is set that means it is at logic 1 that means the current result is zero sign flag it represent whether the current result is positive or negative if this flag bit s this particular flip flop is reset that means zero it means the current result is positive if it is reset that means one it is negative result is negative parity what is parity parity is the number of ones in a number number of ones in a number that is how many ones are there in a number if the numbers if ones they are even that means it the particular number is of even parity if the number of ones they are odd that means it is of odd parity for example if an 8 bit number is there and microprocessor 885 is an 8 bit processor so 8 bit number is there if the result contains a number if the result contain accumulate or result contains suppose 10010010 that means these 8 bits are there and this is the result current result of us it means the, how many ones are there 1 2 and 3 there are three ones it means this this result which is the current result this result is of odd parity this thing is represented by the parity flag bits if zero is there it means odd parity if one that means it is of even parity now carry as we know what is carry whenever we add two numbers suppose here two 8 bit numbers if the result is more than 8 bits that means 9 bit the accumulator it can store only 8 bits where the ninth bit will go the ninth bit bit will be represented you cannot say it is stored there it is represented by this setting this carry flag right so carry flag 
represent whether there is a carry during an addition operation. This carry also represent bore walls in case of subtraction. When subtraction operation is there and we have to take a bore for subtraction, then again this carry flag will set. So this carry represent carry in case of addition and borrow in case of subtraction. If carry generates, then it will set to 1. If borrow generates, it set to 1. If carry do not generate or borrow do not require, then it set to 0. Auxiliary carry. It is important. Most of them, so frequently it is asked. Auxiliary carry. Auxiliary carry is the carry propagated from D3 bit to D4 bit. What does that mean? That means if there are two numbers, we are going to add two numbers. That is, suppose example, 1011101. One number is this, and another number is. If we are going to add these two numbers, right? When we are adding this 0 with 0, 0, 1 with 0, 0, oh, sorry, 1. 1, 0 with 1, 1, 1 add with 1, that is 0, and with a carry 1. This carry will propagate to this place. Here it is 1 plus 1 plus that carry, that is 1, and that carry propagate from here to here, that is 0, that is 1, 1. So here, whenever there is a carry propagation from this place to this place, a carry generates from here and it propagates to this place D3 bit, it is over D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D7. So D3 bit to D4, whenever there is a carry generates, this carry is termed as auxiliary carry. Then a question comes, why not this particular? That means the carry generated from D4 to D5 or a carry generates from this place to this place. Why specifically to this? The answer is actually it represents the BCD carry. As we know, the BCD number that is made up of 4 bit. So whenever there is a, there generates a carry from the lower 4 bit, that means BCD digit to the higher BCD digit, that is represented by the auxiliary carry. In general, you can term this that it is auxiliary carry is nothing but the BCD carry. But it do not represent BCD borrow, mind it. It represents BCD carry only. So it is auxiliary carry. Now, we define this all this. What is the main function of it? You will say it represents the status. No doubt it represents the status. What we are going to do with this status information? Actually, this status information is used to test or to set a condition. The status information of carry, parity, sign, zero, we will put a condition on the basis of this. That means for a set condition of this or a reset condition of this. And then later on we can check whether the condition is true or false. Actually, out of these five flags, the four flags, that means this one, this one, this one, and this one. That means carry, parity, sign, and zero. These four flags, they are used to set a condition and to test a condition. For their set state or for their reset state. Auxiliary carry is never used to set or test a condition. Auxiliary carry is only used for BCD arithmetic. It is never used to set or test a condition. Right? So, on the basis of their set or reset, their set or reset, their set or reset, their set or reset, we can have eight different conditions. For example, 
though we will discuss it later on. For example, for jump operation, everybody of you know jump operation. If it is conditional jump operation, in general what we call it if then statement, where we put up a condition, and if the condition is true, then and then only the jump operation will perform. So those conditions in that jump operation, that is based on these four flags. For example, C, not C and C here, J and Z. What it means? Jump if no zero. It means if this Z flag is not set, if this Z flag is not set, then there will be a jump operation. If it is set, it will, there will not be any jump operation. So we put, we use this Z flag to set this particular condition. We can also say JZ. Here we put another way, jump if zero. It means jump will perform only if there is the Z flag is set. That means if the result, current result is zero, then and then only a jump operation will perform. So jump if zero, jump if no zero. Okay. So all these four flags, they are used to set or test a condition. Now the third, uh, fourth operation that is to sequence the program. Now again it is important to sequence the program. To sequence the program means no doubt our program will be stored in the memory. For example if I say my program is stored in a memory location from 2000 there is a register whose number is 2000 there is an instruction there there is another instruction, another instruction, another instruction, another instruction. That means sequentially the program is stored somewhere here. And it goes on up to here. So this whole program is stored somewhere in the memory location. Instruction by instruction the program is stored in the memory location. No doubt the program will be executed in the same order. What microprocessor will do? Microprocessor will start executing this one. Then it will go to execute this instruction, then it will go to execute this instruction, then it will go to execute this instruction, so on. Now how it, it will came to know? From here it has to go here, from here to here. To do this, microprocessor 885, it is having another register. Now this is an address register which is known as program counter. As it is address register and as we know the address of the memory that is of 16 bit in the case of 885 hence this is a 16 bit register. This 16 bit register will hold the address of that memory location from where microprocessor has to fetch the next byte. That means when we start executing this program, the very first thing that is we have to load the first in memory address where our first byte of the program is present. Here the first byte is present here at this 2000 location. So when start executing it will go. When microprocessor it will get this is your microprocessor it is a memory in this memory somewhere here this program is there. So microprocessor will send an address to this address line that is 2000H and then the data, the byte, this byte from here will be transferred to the microprocessor for executing. Right? 
when microprocessor is getting the byte from here to here to execute it in the meantime this content which is the content of program counter it will be automatically incremented by one so it will becomes automatically that means now microprocessor when finished the job of this byte executing this byte now it will came to know that the program counter content is 2001 hence now it will order to get a byte from the memory location 2001 when it is getting the content from the 2001 it will automatically becomes 2002 so basically it is the program counter which is providing the address of that location from where microprocessor will get the next byte. Suppose somewhere here 2010. The same instruction which we dis just discussed. There is an instruction J and C. 2015. It means jump if no carry to 2015 location. There is a memory location 2015. That means when microprocessor is executing this instruction, what will happen? The content is 2010. It will came to know JNC, jump if no carry. If it finds, if it finds that the condition is true, that means there is no carry. What it will do? Instead of going to the next location, microprocessor has to jump to this particular location so here the sequence breaks no doubt if the condition is not true it will continue with the next byte that means it go on incrementing 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 but if condition is true then increment instead of incremented it it has to convert make the program counter at 2015 and hence microprocessor will jump to the memory 2015 it will came to know that instead of getting instruction from next locations it has to get the location it has to get the instruction from 2015 so the content will become 2015 so it is the program counter which will make which will keep the sequence the ordering of the sequence of the program and as it is, you can say by definition that program counter is that address register which holds the memory address of that location from where microprocessor has to fetch the next byte. Microprocessor 885 also have another another address register which is known as stack pointer this is also the address register hence it is also of 16 bit register this stack pointer as we know what is stack stack is a predefined read write memory in the microprocessor the read write memory location it is a read write memory location it cannot be ROM location. It is read write memory location, which is defined by stack where the data they are stored in the form of stacking. And this stack pointer register it holds the data of the stack top. That means the information that will go on loading in this direction. First, this one is filled, then this one will be 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 filled, then this one, and so on. And the stack pointer, it holds the address of the top of the stack. It holds the address of the highest field location. 
that means the address of this particular location will be held will be stored by the stack pointer is the that stack pointer that means which points to the stack top so it holds the stack top address of the stack memory so these are the various registers which are used to perform the internal microprocessor operations the third type of microprocessor operation is that is external or peripheral initiated operation these externally or peripheral in initiated operation it, in under this category there are various operations like reset that means from outside a reset button is done is pressed and microprocessor has to reset all its operations interrupt microprocessor performing certain operation some emergency task comes so microprocessor suspends its current operation and performs that emergency task same is hold operation so these various type of operation they are termed as externally or peripheral initiated operations these operations they will be we will discuss these operation in the next class when we will discuss the pin configuration of the microprocessor 885 that's all for today thank you thank you very much